Hey there, how you doing? Andy here. Listen, I've just jumped off a, what we call a code red call with one of my members. And I think it might be used to you what I've um, just been through. Uh, by the way, I'm just about to go to the gym. It's um, 1.45 p.m. here in the UK. So excuse my uh, vest. However, uh, this call just now with a member, this member is uh, what you call successful. They're doing over a million pounds. Um, business owner is very, very, very articulate, very switched on. And he wanted to go into a, a, a code red call because he's got a tactical problem. Um, essentially, this campaign, he needs to earn X amount from this campaign, etc. However, um, on the call, what became um, clear was the real problem was a control problem. And this member had a, um, a, a tax bill come in, which was unexpected. And it was a lot bigger than unexpected. And it's caused overwhelm. It's caused panic. And with panic, we make wrong decisions. So digging a bit deeper, and again, the reason why I'm making this, this video now is because lots of the time we assume that we, we know parts of our business, but in fact, we don't. And this member say they're doing, it's a, over a seven-figure business, and it came down to control of, of, of cash flow um, accounts. So first part of the call was, this is the problem. Um, this is where I am. Um, I think I've got a solution, but what's really going on here? Anyway, throughout the call, what we came up with was a, was a set of steps you might be able to apply in your business. So uh, one part of this is around your management accounts and your cash flow. One part is around your forecasting, i.e., say, for example, you want to do a million pound net in the next seven, um, sorry, next 12 months. What's that work out as per month? How's the growth happen? What's the forecasting? Then number three, what's the actual steps to make that figure happen? So let me break it down for you. So the first part I want to share with you is around your, your control of your finances. So one of the big things and one of the, the misnomers and, and well, stakes to be frank in recruitment is we focus on getting X amount of revenue, X amount of leads, X amount of candidates, placements. But then what's going out the door? What's the actual... Um, the, the actual balance, net profit per month, per year, etc. And we need that control. So first off, reporting monthly. You should have management reports from your accountant. So every month, you've got a management report from your accountant. So to give you an example, um, what it might look like is this. So this is, this is my, well, one of my management accounts. So in the UK, we've got a way of recording our accounts. And they're under headings that often don't make sense. And it's different for different parts of the world. So you take that as you need to uh, um, adapt and apply. So the first thing is we need management accounts every month. So what that is, if we look at mine, we've got the last 12 months. So we've got 12 columns. Then we've got year to date. Then the previous two years as a high level figure. Now moving down from top to bottom, we've got sales, cost of sales, gross profit, expenses, operating profit, then corporation tax and net profit. Okay. Now with this member, uh, and again, very, very successful business owner. However, these management accounts are, are not in place. So every month we're looking at we've done X amount of leads or X amount of placements. But what's really going on financially? So when he looked at his, his numbers, last month they did 170,000. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? So the expenses side of things, again, in the UK, if I read out some expenses headings we get here, we've got rent and rates, insurance, software and internet costs. Now, these are really terms. So what will happen is your bookkeeper or your accountant will make a guess where to put your costs for your business. And they'll put it under one of these headings. And there's about 20 headings here. But the reality is, as a recruitment business owner, that doesn't give you control. It doesn't give you control. So you actually don't know where your real costs are gone. So the first action was to this member, get your management reports in place, which is, as I'm saying here, so this management report I get every month has an accountant summary. It has a detailed profit and loss. And we've got six to seven pages to this document. But the main page is where we've got the 12 months, we've got our year to date and the previous two year final figures at the top. Then moving down, again, sales, cost of sales, gross profit, expenses, operating profit, tax, net profit. So net profit is what we're interested in. So the action I gave to this member was, number one, get his management reports in, in place. So get this done. Get it from your accountant each month. Number two, you need a real expense report, a real cash flow re report. So in simple terms, as opposed to having expenses like rent and rates, 
um, software internet costs, um, repairs and maintenance, we need the real headings. So what the real expenses are in your business. So say for example, you've got 500,000 outgoings per month in your business. What are the real headings they go underneath? So for example, it could be um, data set um, mapping, data set building, it could be commissions, it could be, it could be anything. But you need to know the real headings. So what the account should give you is a spreadsheet that every single month you can see where your real costs have gone. So again, the management report will let you see your high level trend throughout the year. The detailed spreadsheet will be a detailed breakdown of your real expenses. So you can see where your real costs are going. So this gives you control. Now this sounds simple, but I've just had a chat with a very successful businessman and it was not in place. And I've been through this myself. You know, I've got no problem asking anyone, I don't know. And I've sit down with my accountant, I talk to him like a five-year-old. What does this mean? Tell me what, what this means. Why have you allocated this cost underneath maintenance? Well, it's what we have to do, it's how we have to submit the accounts. But it's, it's rubbish, only something I can use. So then the account has developed a, uh, a next report for me, which is simply a spreadsheet that details my real costs. So you must have this every single month. And then with the management report, you've got a trend from month one to month 12, then the last two, three years. So actions I gave to his business owner was number one, get your management report in place. Number two, get your expenses report in place, your, your true cash flow. Now, you haven't got time to be messing about with this. So your accountant or your bookkeeper is providing the service to you. So the way I've, I've gotten to do this is, ask for the management report, they should be able to do pretty easily. Number two, the expense sheet. You allocate first of all, as in one of my members, where you think the cost goes, but then you make a quick five minute video. This goes here, this goes here, then give it back to the accountant. Don't spend hours sitting there going through line by line. You haven't got the time. You're an entrepreneur and it is painful. And for this member, they're in a place of overwhelm. So we've chunked it down into a set of actions. So the second is get your expenses report in place. Now third, we don't do this in recruitment. It's forecasting. So if this member, um, they want to get to a place of doing three, I'm sorry, one million net profit in the temp business, in the temp business, okay? So with the accountant, we say to the accountant, right, in this part of the business, by December 2020, 31st, I want to be doing one million net per year. So that works out as 83,333 per month per year. So if we think about an upward scale, so come December next year, by December next year, we want to be doing 8333 per month. So what the accountant then needs to do is create a forecasting, which means, let's say in the next three months, you're going to get to a place of doing, um, <coughs> say you're doing 15,000 a month now. Next three months, let's get to 35,000. The next three months will be 55,000. But then what you must also do with your accountant is let them understand what your business model is. So the cost of acquisition. So say, for example, um, for every 100,000 you earn, so if you earn 100,000 now, you might make 40,000 in your temp business, but you might have leverage. So if you make a million, you, your cost might be not 40%, it might be 25%. So your accountant needs to understand this when giving you forecasting. So the next action I've given to my member is, speak to your accountant and have them come back with a forecasting model. Now that sounds grandiose. All it is is a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet with thought on it. So not just saying you need to be doing 833 per month. It starts off where we are now, and you'll speak to the, your account and say, where we are now, we're doing X. We're going to apply this strategy, which means we should get to Y in three months. Then at that point, we're going to reset and we're going to get to the next step, etc. So you've got a forecasting model. So what this gives a business owner is control. So we know what our monthly figures are. We know what they are for the past 12 months. We know what the last three years have been. Next, we've got a true cash flow report every month that we can see our true cash flow in the business. So we sit down. We can see exactly where our costs are going. We can see exactly what's happening with our strategies. So when people join the inner circle, they come for the automation and all the, the exciting, shiny stuff. The reality is we're about building businesses. And this is a key fundamental of building a business. So the second part is this cash flow report each month. Then the third part is forecasting. So anyone can make a plan and say, I want to do a million next year. But without an actual plan behind it, it's absolutely just bullshit. It's a waste of time. So the forecasting though, first of all, we got the accountant to create a set of financial metrics we need to hit. So in December 2019, this member needs to be hitting, say, 50,000 per month in the temp business. So how do we do that? 
Now it comes back to inner circle strategies. So with this member, um, I'm not going to share too much information, but the next step is how do we turn that into reality? Now, the reason why this member um, was in a place of well, overwhelm, you know, we've all been there. And if you haven't been there, you will be there at some point in your business. I'm a massive believer that every business owner will go through at some point. And when you get out the backside of it, you know nothing will break you. But I've been there. It's the darkest, darkest, darkest time ever when you're about everything, the shit's hitting the fan. It's tough being an entrepreneur. But what this gives you, though, is control. You know exactly where you are each month. It gives you control. With forecasting, you know what numbers you need to hit. Then it comes to a place of how do we make it happen? So in this case, with the tent business, the action I've given this member is this. I want you to come up with, um, so it could be inner circle strategies, or RMI strategies, um, I my strategies, or it could be something um, old school. But I want you to come up with the options you've got. So in this case, we've got referrals, we've got job boards, we've got Facebook, we've got double R, double R. Create this matrix. For each one of these different strategies, I want you to sit down with your, um, your new lead, team leader, which I'll come to shortly, and I want you to do the following. For each one of these, the three, re, the three opportunities we've got with this strategy, three opportunities we've got with this strategy. So for example, um, with double R, double R, we've had members in the past go from a database of 1,000 to 200,000 um, in the space of six months. So what's the opportunity we've got with that strategy? But then also, be negative, why won't this work? So essentially, each strategy, the three opportunities, then the three reasons why it won't work. So I wanna be really negative. Then come back to me with this matrix, and then we're gonna look at each one of these, and we're gonna dig deep, and from there, set create a set of metrics for one of these strategies. So that's the second action I gave him. So to remove all the overwhelm of how do I get to a million and what do we do? Deep breath, what are our options? Deep breath, what are the options? But then why will it work? Why won't it work? Next step, we then apply the strategy and put metrics around a 30 day plan, a 60 day plan, etc. Now the third component, this member um, got into a place of overwhelm Essentially, because that part of the business, they're not passionate about. They're not passionate about. So they've, um, they've looked to bring in a, a, a new, new MD for the business. And it um, didn't work out. And so when I had the, the, the prep call with one of my team members, about we got the call with this member today. These are the, the, the metrics. This is the constraint. I was speaking to my, t my, t my team member. I said, there's something else going on here. There's something else going on. Um, Let's dig a bit deeper. And sure enough, we got on the call, and it turns out that this business owner is jaded. They're not passionate about that, that part of the business. So if we put a plan in place, and now that's what we're doing here, so we've got an 18-month plan to get to a million net um, per year, so 83, 33 per month per year. The reality is, when we put the phone down from this call, you're going to go back to your business, and you're not going to be passionate about doing this. So let's take it head on. You won't do this. So we need someone to come into your business and actually do this, actually run this part of your business. What are the options? What are the options? So we've spoken about who can come in and actually run this. So essentially, we've got an 18 month plan, which is gonna be a project. And it'll be running one or two key strategies from the inner circle, but we need to make sure it, it works. So somebody needs to own this project because the business owner won't do it. So you might clap your hands, New Year's Eve, you get all excited, this year I'm gonna smash it. Guess what, January, you're doing the same thing, you're deflated, it doesn't work and you're in hell. So. You've got to be real. If you're not going to do it, if you're not going to apply it, someone else needs to. So we had a conversation about who this person could be. And um, we spoke about timelines and it's getting towards the end of the year. It's like, no, 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 no. This starts now. This is a now thing. This is a now thing. So how can we get someone in now to run this project? And that's what we spoke about. So just to reframe, what's happened here? Um, this member is a very successful entrepreneur in recruitment. Very successful. And before the call, I thought it was going to be tactical around a campaign or around a, a webinar strategy or whatever it might be. It wasn't. It was about, fuck, I'm an overwhelm. I've got this bill coming in. How the hell do I pay it? And then we make rash decisions when we get into that place. So the first thing is, let's get a reset. Let's get some clarity. So the first thing was, we need control of our metrics. Not as in our campaign metrics and we've bought in half a million. No. How much money have you got in your pocket metrics? So again, the action is get your management reports done monthly. I've given him a structure to get this done. Number two, from your accountant, get your real cash flow report 
not the accountant's report, which they submit to the, um, whichever body it is in your country, so in the in UK, HMRC, but a real report you can understand as a business owner. So I didn't grow up in a, in, in a household where my dad was coming home with accountant's reports. I grew up in a household where dad was in the army. I grew up in a household where mum had two jobs. So I've had to learn this stuff over the years. However, I'm very, very good at accepting I don't know most things. So you must sit down with your accountant and say, what the hell does this mean? So the second action was get a cash flow report in your language. The third thing I've asked them to do is get a forecasting in place. So if you want to be doing a million net in this part of the business in the next 18 months, that's eight three 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 per month, what does that mean? How, what's the forecasting in place? So what's the cost of, of each temp that we bring on board? What's the actual revenue, profit of each temp we bring on board? What are we doing now? What do we think we can do in three months, six months, nine months? It won't be linear, it will go up. But then also we might have leverage points. So as we get to 500 temps, our cost might go down from X to Y. So the account needs to understand this when forecasting. The forecasting won't be a set of numbers which will be linear. It will be based on your business model. So you must have a relationship with your accountant. Then the next thing I've, we've done from that point is said, great. We know where we are with the management reports. We know where we are with our year to date, our previous two years. We can see our trend, our costs. We now have a cash flow report each month and we've now got a forecast in place. Then it comes to how do we make that happen? How do we make the forecasting real? That comes down to strategies. And that's where often a member, or I see it in recruitment, it bugs the living hell out of me, is um, I've run this for two, three months, this is a solution to everything. No, it's not, you're running a campaign. You've run some automation that's worked really well. But you're a business owner, get a grip. If you're not gonna take your business seriously, why the hell do you expect your accountant to? And if you haven't pushed back on your accountant and said, what the hell do these numbers mean? What does this heading mean? How does this break down? This software internet cost, what is that? If you've not pushed back on your accountant, then now's the time. So we've taken our control. We've now got a forecast in. Next step, let's then apply it to a strategy. So normally what happens when someone joins the inner circle, they're completing an audit document and we give them their strategies and this is your first 30 days, 90 days, metrics to hit, etc. In this instance, we're having a reset and saying, right, we've got some forecasting in place, which is cool. How do we make it real? Well, these are the strategies that we're going to use. But the reality is this business, business owner is jaded. They're not going to do it. They might do it for the next month and be passionate again. But they're not going to be there on a Tuesday night when it's raining outside, if you're in the UK. They're not going to do it. So who's going to run that for you? And again, you own your business and you take responsibility for your business. You can blame everyone, but you make the decisions who you hire. You know whether you're actually going to follow through. This whole laptop thing that I've got, the laptop recruiter, this comes from my life. When I quit the corporate world, I said I'm not ever going to work for anyone ever again. I'm going to live for my laptop. However, it's not just pressing a few buttons. There's a business behind it, and you're a business owner. And I hope you don't lose everything, but I've been there. And this gentleman has been there. And most people I know who are, um, I look up to in, in the business world, they've lost everything. If you haven't, then take control now. If you have, take control now. Now, if you have got control of your finances, next step is to forecast. And then anyone can sit there with a spreadsheet. I've, the, the amount of proposals I've had over the years, if this business will do 5 million and they've sent a spreadsheet, it's absolutely bollocks. How is it going to happen in the real world? And there's three components to it. One is your role will change. In this case, it's actually a negative change. You become jaded. Number two is your team. And number three is the projects, the automation, the tools, the strategies that allow you to get there, which is why members join us. However, it's actually three parts to your business. So actions. Number one, get your management reports. Number two, get a cash flow report. Number three, get a cash flow forecast in place. Number four, what are the strategies to make it happen? Number five, what are the metrics behind that strategy? Number six, who will own those strategies? And be real with yourself. If you're not going to do it, or if you know that you're not really going to follow through on that, then who is? So that said, hopefully it's been of use to you. I'm about to go and smash the gym now. Um, I just want to share that with you because I was quite surprised that this member was in that place. But I thought, you know what, there's probably going to be quite a few other people in that same place. So hopefully it's been of use to you. Uh, if it's the first time you've seen us, um, I don't normally wear a vest. Um, RecruitmentMarketInternational.com 
is where you can find me. Um, by all means, reach out. But remember, you're in business essentially to, let's be honest about this, to make more money. Make more money. And when someone comes to us, whether it be a startup or someone doing 10 million, it's to make more money or to make more profit, which is a better outcome. And the second one is, I want to have a lifestyle. You know, we did a hot seat with Laura, Laura Anderson the other week. She's doing three quarters of a million, um, working 20 hours per week. So everyone's got a different driver. Someone else might take the same business and work 60 hours per week and be in a completely different place. Only you know your drivers, but you own it. So finances, metrics, no, no, no. How much are you getting paid? How much are you getting paid? Are you in control? So with that said, I will see you soon. Love to know your feedback, love to know your comments. And with that said, I will see you on the other side. Yeah.